We're going to start off our news tonight by talking about guns. I know you're quite surprised I can see it on your face, but I want to talk about guns in a different aspect. And this is the way uh, people are reacting to the firearms, you know, the anti-gun groups, the, um, the celebrities who come out and speak about firearms. And we'll get to all that here in a second. But first of all, we're going to start with this video, the new video from Project Veritas, James O'Keefe and his uh, crew over there. And they've done another great video where they go out to the pundits, they go out to these congressmen, these senators, uh, everybody who wants to take your gun rights away, and they just ask them a very simple question. They say, well, since you're so keen on taking gun rights away, and you think that nobody should be armed, why don't you advertise the fact that your house is a gun-free zone? And if you remember the one he did previously about the, I believe it was a, a group up in New York, a news agency, who was putting out the information of gun owners as if they were sex offenders, like, hey, look at this, this map with all the dots on it. And people were very upset about this. So they went back and challenged those people. They say, hey, why don't you put this gun-free zone sign in your yard? And people like, oh, I can't do that. Somebody might break in my house. I'm like, oh, you think? You think if people knew that you didn't have a way to defend yourself, they'd kick in your front door, steal what you have, maybe hurt your family? And, but the logic just never seems to amaze me, uh, the logic of these people who spend their days, and when you talk about these politicians, surrounded by armed guards. That's your senators, your congressmen, of course, your president. Even going down to your city councilmen who want to ban various city ordinances like they do here in Austin. These people spend at least eight hours of their day, you know, 24 hours a day if they're a president, surrounded by armed on-site security who are ready to rock and roll if something was to happen. Granted, people sneak into the White House all the time because I guess the Secret Service has other things on their, on their mind. But that's another story. But first, let's go to this video. Hidden cam shows anti-gun congressmen and staffers refusing to promote homes as gun-free zones. All right, we're called the Citizens Get Sisless Gun Violence. Yes. Right. Basically, we want to see a ban on, on all guns. Yeah. Homes. And, and specifically, you know, we want to put this in people's, in, in every single law in the air for people to don't guns and say, Sound, this home is probably gun free. Like something that you would like to put on in your apartment or car or home? I am actually a gun <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. no! We would, put, we would put the sign right out here in front of this office. But not your home? No. No. I don't have guns in my house. That's good. Really? So you could advertise it, though. I could, but I don't want to. Oh, why not? Because I don't. I mean, just I mean, explain it to me. Tell me, tell me what you what makes I you just so assumed, nervous. like, I just got my car broken into, and I, we've had our house, like, they stole packages up the front. Like, I mean, we're right there on, like, the verge of, like, the crime. Oh, so, like, mm -hmm. so what do you mean, like, like bad neighborhoods? Like yeah, I guess, you know, so the concern is, if, oh, there's no gun. We just kick down the door. Worst thing that's going to happen... Uh, well, know. I mean, what I mean, then you're basically saying that that you should have a gun in your house to yeah. kind of protect it. Yeah. No, but there is. Yeah, it's so tough, right? You think somebody would break into your house? Yeah. And they, but I if do. you put it up, I do kind of wonder. You think it'd make you a victim? I wonder. Wow. I, what do you think? I feel like that would unnecessarily make my home a target. I'm talking mm -hmm. about with criminals, not. With uh, criminals. I know, I, I know, I know. But on the other side of that, oh, I think it could mm -hmm. go both ways. And I'm not surprised at all to get that type of reaction. Now, one. Uh, reaction I thought was somewhat surprising was that of actress Lena Dunham. And let me be clear, when I talk about celebrities reacting to stuff, they have a First Amendment right to say what they want to say, but I also have my First Amendment right to give my two cents about it. Uh, so I'm not attacking the lady, but I just thought this was somewhat interesting. And this is actress Lena Dunham. She's from the HBO series Girls. And she wants to remove guns from advertisements for Jason Bourne. And, and, and they remove the image, but uh, I'll, I'll give you the quote. She said, she said, New Yorkers, what if we do some peeling and get rid of the guns and the Jason Bourne subway ads? I'm so tired of guns, which is very laughable to me. Now, first, let's talk about uh, Matt Damon, which, you know, I don't have a problem with the guy by and large. He did recently come out and say that America needed Australian type gun control, which I was like, I don't understand this logic of these guys who uh, make action movies. And once again, action movies aren't bad. Violent video games aren't bad. Violent music isn't bad. I'm not calling for any type of censorship. But it's always interesting to me, these guys who make a living by uh, promoting these type of gun violence measures as opposed to uh, your action hero who pulls out a firearm as the first option, kills everybody in the room. Like, well, maybe one of those guys is his first day on the job. Maybe he didn't know what was going on. This is always my thought. But you got guys like Matt Damon doing, doing that kind of stuff. And then you have Lena Dunham on the opposite end. And at least to Lena Dun Dunham's credit, and I'm not trying to mess up your name. It's just I'm messing up on it. Um, to her credit, at least she's being consistent with it. 
But as I was saying, you have all these Hollywood actors who go out and make these violent movies. They go to these red carpet events where right after the picture frame, because you see the picture frame, like you see me, but at a Hollywood premiere, there's like a SWAT team standing over there. It's a Hollywood reporter and everything. You can see it. Uh, these guys have uh, full battle rattle SWAT teams. They got dogs in the red carpet. They got the bomb uh, the bomb machine in the truck over there. Everything's there to protect them. But if you dare have a concealed carry, these guys want to make a, a video saying that you need to turn in your gun rights in so we can live in a utopia while they live in these chateaus and some foreign land. <laughs> so uh, that's a very long winded way of saying, at least she's consistent. She's saying like, hey, I don't want guns and I don't even want guns in movies. So though I don't agree with that, I'm not, like I said, I'm not calling for any type of censorship. She's at least consistent in that because I don't know how many times we've seen these guys. Um, they have these big bodyguards. Their bodyguards get arrested for carrying weapons and all the other things. Like, so they live in these uh, kind of private estates. They don't have to worry about too much. They go to the red carpet events. They got the SWAT teams there to watch their butt. I'm fighting for the rights of the person who works the graveyard shift in the bad part of town who doesn't have anybody to come and rescue them if something goes bad. And speaking of uh, when something goes bad, we have a robber with an AK-47 shot by a Waffle House customer. And this is near Dallas. They say police have identified the suspect in an aggravated robbery at a Waffle House last week. Customers told police that a man had come into the restaurant armed with an AK-47 and robbed numerous customers as well as the business. One customer, who is legally carrying a concealed handgun, followed the robber into the parking lot because he was afraid for his wife's safety. His wife was about to arrive momentarily. The customer called out to the robber, who then turned and pointed the rifle at him. The police said the customer then shot the robber several times. Now, while I do respect the gusto of this customer to you know go out there and protect his wife and the other people in the facility, by and large, in most situations, if the bad guy is going away from you, if, he, if he's not kidnapping somebody or, or something else like that where you'd want to follow him, I just say let him go. The cops catch him down the road. They can fight with him if they want. But usually just let the guy go. But if he chooses to do that, it's a case where it worked out well for him. And I'm not going to uh, you know, badger the guy because he, he was doing what he thought was, was right. And that's really all you can do. At the end of the day, you do what you think is right. And uh, luckily, the guy didn't get hurt. But... Personally, I'd just say let the guy go. And this is the type of story that you won't hear because um, I was trying to quantify this. I, I was thinking about this argument the other day about how people react to guns. And I, I run into these people say, well, how can you not want to ban guns? And, and I give them this example. I say if a guy drove drunk in, let's say, Idaho, and he hit a van and he killed a family of four, it'd be a local news story, maybe a statewide news story, right? But if that same situation, a guy in Idaho took an AK-47 and shot four people, it would be the international news sensation. You got celebrities and politicians and all these people coming out the woodwork. Same result, the, the family of four is still dead, but it's just the tool, the tool being the firearm versus a drunk driver using a vehicle as a tool. If it's a, a, a vehicle accident, People don't care, but if it's an AK-47 or AR-15, it is all the rage. And as we're continuing our talk about guns, let's talk about some things that are going on in Baton Rouge. And police say stolen guns would have targeted officers in Baton Rouge, investigators say. And they say authorities in Louisiana Tuesday said that a burglary at a Baton Rouge pawn shop was part of a larger conspiracy to target law enforcement officers amid protests over a fatal shooting of African-Americans by police. Investigators believe four men broke into a pawn shop early Sunday, or excuse me, Saturday, and stole eight handguns. Baton Rouge police chief said that one of the suspects was uh, captured at the scene, and he said they were trying to get guns and get bullets to harm police officers. Now, the thing I want you to note about the suspects in this case the suspects were targeting eight handguns. To own a handgun here in the United States of America, you have to be age 21, clean background, and all that stuff. But as I look at this list of the suspects they know were involved, or uh, the suspects that have been captured, I should say more accurately, they have a 17-year-old, a 20-year-old, and a 13-year-old. The thing I want you to take note from that is none of these people are 21 years old. And it always goes back to what I say if people can't buy a firearm, they will steal a firearm. Guys who were not old enough to own a pistol in the United States of America broke into some place that had a reasonable security, I'm sure of that, and stole firearms or attempted to steal the firearms. The guys uh, who got shot, the bailiffs up in Michigan, I believe it was, 
uh, somebody stole somebody's pistol and started shooting at them. Somebody who was handcuffed, you know, in his orange jumpsuit, stole a pistol and opened fire on people. The guy who tried to kill Donald Trump went to an active duty conscious police officer and tried to steal his pistol. If you can't buy a gun, people are bold enough to try to steal them from police. Banning firearms is not the issue to your problem, just as I gave you the example of the drunk driver. If, it, it is to that old adage that these liberals, they love abortion, but they would try to ban it if they performed abortions with firearms. But uh, I think that's enough on the gun issue. Let's talk about some other things that affect our nation. Talk about Donald Trump. I know he's everybody's favorite topic. And uh, he's getting closer to picking his VP. Many people are speculating as to who it's going to be. He recently met with Governor Mike Pence. And they said they met after a rally and they had a very good chat, though it has not been confirmed if he is going to be the VP. The other contenders for the VP spot, uh, so says the news, are Newt Gingrich and also New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Um, I wouldn't be happy with, <laughs> I was about to say all three. I, I don't know too much about Mike Benz, but uh, Christie and Newt Gingrich are uh, not my cup of tea. Now let's go on to some other news. We know that the Attorney General Lynch has refused to answer questions uh, accurately about her conversation with Bill Clinton. We have this article here saying that Congressman David Trout came to the conclusion that Lynch's testimony was a big waste of time. He said that uh, she could not answer a question or did not give a direct answer at least 74 times in her speech. Let's go ahead and take a listen to that. So, uh, you know, the, the meeting on the tarmac with former President Clinton, that was a pretty fortuitous meeting for you, wasn't it? I would not say that. Well, it gave you a perfect alibi, because if you had recused yourself, as some have suggested, at the outset of this investigation, because you're friends with the Clintons and maybe hope to be attorney general in, in the, her, her, her administration, then you wouldn't have, then you could stand here and say, I defer to the FBI director. But you didn't recuse yourself, but now you're using the meeting on the tarmac to basically say, to avoid the appearance of impropriety, uh, I can't answer your question. Isn't that basically what's happened here today? Congressman, I would not say it was fortuitous uh, for me or for anyone. It led me to take, again, another unusual step in this case. But, but that's what's happened today. In fact, I knew you, I knew you were going to answer our questions today. And I, I apologize for wasting so much time here because it's really not been very productive. And I asked my staff to count the number of times today you would say I can't answer that question or refuse to give a, uh, a, 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 an appropriate response. It's happened 74 times so far. So really, you know, it's either one of two things. Either you're saying that because you want to avoid the appearance of impropriety, in which case you should have recused yourself, or you're trying to protect uh, 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 Hillary Clinton. So uh, my colleague, Mr. Smith, asked earlier if you had talked with Bill or Hillary about serving as attorney general in, their, in, in Hillary's administration. Have you talked to any of their staff? No, I have not. Have you talked to anyone on the transition team? I know they're talking to people. I have not spoken to anyone on either the campaign or transition or any staff members affiliated with them. Do, do you want to be attorney general? Moving quickly now, we're going to talk about the U.S. food stock. Half of U.S. food produce is thrown away, new research suggests. Vast quantities of fresh produce grown in the United States are left in the field to rot, fed to livestock, or hauled away from the field to a landfill because of unrealistic beauty standards. Basically, people are judging the food by its look, not by its taste or, you know, uh, health benefit. And it says by one government tally, about $160 billion is wasted by retailers and customers every year. Something to think about. Moving quickly now, uh, Things going on in New York. Uh, we've seen these kind of zombie videos uh, of various people doing various things. Now they're saying that people are freaking out after taking K2, which is a synthetic type of marijuana, up in New York. And they say people were just freaking out, vomiting, urinating, doing all types of things on the streets. I'm sure that's nothing new for New Yorkers. They say they've seen everything. And I guess it's just a, something to freak out to other people, but maybe not them. And quickly now, We'll end with this. I know this isn't the hardest hitting news of the day, but I just thought it was too funny to pass up. A woman got trapped in a graveyard chasing Pokemon. And I just want to share this video with you because I thought it was so hilarious. And it just shows how people would just go anywhere and do anything to catch a Pokemon. We've seen people getting uh, beat up and robbed chasing these Pokemon. So here's a video of a woman chasing Pokemon. And we'll come back after this with more special reports. There is no other way out of this except from this gate that's closed. Okay, push button to exit the gate if the gate is closed. Bruh, this button is broke the 
Jonathan Collins, you shut the f up. If you're trapped in a graveyard, you'd be freaking the f too. Bruh, like. For the balance of the hour, George Humphrey, my good friend, going back 25 years to when we were both involved, he was like one of the heads of the campaign locally uh, for Pat Buchanan. Back then, handing out pamphlets about the private Federal Reserve. He's written several best selling books. His new book just came out, it's on Amazon.com Life, Love, Joy, A Story, Humanity's Origins, The Polarity. Uh, present choices and our unrealized potential getting into what the globalists actually think but from a different perspective and, and let me tell you whether what he gets into in the book is accurate or not it's the cosmology of the elite just from a different perspective why they think the way they think why they're waging war against humanity the globalists say they're going to break away and be their own species they believe their psychopathic behavior uh, is 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 actually advanced. It's why they interbreed with each other in every elite culture throughout history. Actually, is a parasite uh, on humanity, and they're creating new species. What do you think AI computers are? What do you think all this stuff is? Uh, so we're going to be talking about that with George Humphrey. But George, you know, you've been a city council person. You've been involved at you know, the lobbying uh, level. You've seen a lot of things around the world. You've been an international businessman, a real estate developer. You've you know, jack of all trades, smart guy. Looking at the current climate, have you ever seen anything like it? How would you describe it? And then looking at Donald Trump and this whole phenomenon as he begins to pull ahead in scientific polls, I really think they're going to come after him physically. And what would you say to the Bernie Sanders supporters you know, later? I want to talk about this. How could they support Hillary when obviously she's the establishment candidate? <laughs> well, first of all, it's good to be here. And it's good to, good to thanks for coming, man. You look I, good. Yeah, I love you, brother. And it's always fun to be on this show. And, and, and doing this kind of work is the most life invigorating work I could ever do. And I think for most of you listeners, when you talk about this stuff, it invigorates your life. And we're not doom and gloom. We're about making this planet a better place. Now, it's my opinion that most, not all, but most of the Bernie Sanders people are young. They are, their hearts are open. They want to do the right thing. They realize how much corruption is out there. But they just haven't had the experience. And and I have a lot of people I know who were Bernie Sanders people. And I, you know, I listen to what they're saying. I and I say I agree with that concept and I agree with that concept. But I say, what is the greatest danger to our world and our country? And then think about it. It's the consolidation of power of the government. It's the consol power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? And they go, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's Bernie's what, what's his plan? Is to give all the power to the government. And then they go, oh, yeah. And then they start realizing. Now, all this attack on Trump, it's, I, I'm, I'm still not 100% for Trump, but in comparison to, to, to Hillary, sign me up. You know, he's against the TPP. He's against vaccines. He's for protecting our He says borders. he's a communist Chinese agent, which she is. Well, she <laughs> remember us back in the mid '90s exposing her. She is so many things, and anyone who is voting for Hillary Clinton is either totally mind controlled, which is about ninety five percent of the people, or you're just you're getting paid off in some ways. You're you're an incredible, ignorant tra traitor if you're supporting Hillary. And we can go over point by point by point by point by point by point by point why Hillary is not good for America, why Hillary is not good for your families, why Hillary is not good for this earth. And, and who is Hillary Clinton? I mean, she just looks and acts like a robot. Well, <laughs> a satanically possessed robot. I mean, she looks like the Joker meets the Stepford wives. And, and remember, remember, Hillary is only a puppet. She's all, there are people who are pulling her of course. tubes. And so I don't want I don't put all my attention into attacking Hillary because it's self-evident that she is. But she's flawed. the establishment candidate. She so if Bernie Sanders people support her when she stole the election from Sanders. And, and, and especially in California, what happened in California was a complete, complete snow job in, in which the votes were stolen. And remember, well, they just decided who was going to be the winner the day before. With, with, yeah, of course. With paper ballots, you can stuff one paper ballot box at a time. With computer, with the four computer companies, you can do whole cities at a time. Folks, this is self-evident. There's no way to recount the, the votes, and Hillary's people control the machine. And that's why they want centralization everywhere. 
is because then they can scam and run things and a few little things that don't match won't expose it. But this time, they didn't just steal it and have the computers come out the way they wanted. They admitted that the AP that runs what they formerly called Voter News Services, we yeah. cover this at nauseum for new listeners, they talked to the superdelegates and then projected who would win and decided the night before what the numbers would be <laughs> to program the computers and then admitted it in the newspapers. Of course. Now, this is... But, but we now reached a point, George, where they admit, okay, there is a world government and it's unelected, but it's not the one the conspiracy theorists told you about. Right. <laughs> you know, Hillary is 100% behind the TPP. TPP makes NAFTA and GATT look like child's play. Let me repeat that. TPP is the most dangerous agreement that this government has ever signed and is the greatest danger to your freedoms and to this republic. Hillary Clinton is for it 100%. But she's going to stick up for women. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. What do you think of CNN, though, when they took it and had her being worshipped and said she was a golden goddess? Have you seen that? I, I have. When, when she had all the white on. I mean, it's 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 almost comical, except it's not comical because it is a matter of life and death. It is a matter of life and death. Not only the life and death of the rule of law and the republic, but of the future of this country. And folks... It is up to us. You know, it's not all doom and gloom. We can... can no, we're not. I mean, we're admitting how bad it is. In fact, this is a good paradigm you always point out. And you say this 20 years ago to me, and I didn't get it. Hey, we got to give people hope. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm exposing the evil. The hope is we better fight it because that's just how my instincts are. A lot of other folks hear something's overwhelming. They just give up. No, no, no. We're exposing it because exposing them, yes. basic humanity will turn against them yes. like the Brexit. And that's now beginning. That's why it's such an exciting time to be alive. They're having to pull out all the stops to try to block us right now. Absolutely. But they're not successful at this point. They're losing control. And you see the whole world resisting globalism now the whole world is coming together that's why they're activating george soros groups he admits it on race and religious lines to cause infighting there's beefs with everybody there's real bad cops there's real bad white supremacists or blacks of course but they they blow it up out of proportion and make it the only issue so we're all uncomfortable fighting with each other so we don't see the controllers above us that are coming after everybody absolutely Alex. so let's get into where you think uh, Trump's going, uh, Okay, the state of the world right now. All, all you have to do is look at history. 1980, we had the Iran fair when Jimmy Carter was, uh, it was being taken over by Ronald Reagan. 1992, we had Waco and we had Oklahoma City. All these are false flag events. 2011, the biggest false flag event of all time. 2008, and, it's, and, and I do astrology, and whether you believe in it or not, is that there is the, the objective history of false flag events, and it appears to me as though a month and a half to two months before the election or two months or three months after the election, there is the possibility of a huge, massive false flag events. And knowledge is power. People like Alex and others around the world are, are putting out objective information so that we do not get blindsided at this time. We know what's coming on because what they want to do is the old Hegelian theory, problem, reaction, solution, problem, reaction, solution, the thesis, antithesis, synthesis. And friends, we have the ability now. We're building up the energy so that we can, we can transcend this stuff. And they well, almost can't do it anymore because they always get caught. Well, they're always getting caught. I mean, what happened in Orlando? Anybody well, let's talk about astrology. Yeah. I personally just don't get into all that whatever, but then you look at the elite, I mean, around the world, they are obsessed with it. Totally. They're making their decisions off of it. I mean, basically all of them. And so you better study it. I do now to be able to know what they're up to yeah. because and I don't mean the pop stuff, but I mean the real stuff. Right. That's what they're into. Well, remember, everything is energy. Everything is energy. And if by understanding energy, we learn the astrology to transcend it. Let me repeat that. We learn to transcend it. Uh, astrology to transcend it. for us to become our own highest Christ itself for each human being to become the best that they can be to live in cooperation and honesty and truth and all the things that we're talking about which is the basic bedrock of the republic of this country friends this is not new stuff this has gone way back to the one called Jesus and even way way back before that we have the option right now, and even though we're facing the greatest danger, the greatest danger 
to the to the future of humanity on this planet. We're also have the greatest opportunity to transcend, but it's going to take people. It's taking people like Alex and many others who have the backbone and the courage to speak the truth and to say, "Hey, look, this is not right. The king has no clothes on." So you probably uh, heard of Pokemon Go. It's the mobile game where you can go around. It's geolocated, and you catch little creatures called Pokemon. And some interesting stories coming out about that, right? So you've got this woman who found a body in a river from playing Pokemon Go. But then you've also got some more concerning articles, right? While you track Pokemon, Pokemon Go tracks you. And it talks about how this app is collecting the data of millions and millions of people because obviously no one reads the terms of service. You download an app or you install something on your computer, it would take 30 days per year if you actually read all of the terms of service. It's just basically impossible. So what they're doing is they're collecting pretty much all they possibly can. They're collecting your location, every single thing about you they can gather from your phone and your kids too. Even if your kids are under the age of 12, they're still getting it. And at their discretion, they're gonna give it to anyone they please, right? So there's numerous pieces in USA Today, TechCrunch about this. And you know, I was talking to Dr. Group earlier, he came in today to uh, be on the show and he was telling me about what he found out about Pokemon Go. And it's, it's wild because it's such a big thing right now. Um, it's a silly thing, right? It's a silly game, but it's really not that silly the way they track you and your kids when you're using this. And he was showing me about some of the permissions and I thought it was absolutely absurd. So Dr. Group, uh, what's going on with this? Well, it's good to know. It's always good to be aware, and especially for parents out there. I mean, even there's there are a lot of adults playing this, a lot of young children. I have two young boys, and I tell you what, I you know I don't allow them to play a lot of these games, but I know parents that just kids have full access to purchase all these apps. And the scary thing is we're losing our privacy. You know that. We know that. We talk about it all the time. But since the Pokemon Go has been in the news, we did a little bit of digging and I started looking at it and found out that the Pokemon Go was created by a company called Niantic. And Niantic actually has connections with the company Keyhole. And anybody can do this uh, research themselves. Uh, Keyhole was actually acquired by Google back in 2004. So that's strange. Uh, if you dig even deeper, you'll see that Keyhole received funding from a firm called InQtel, which is a government-controlled venture capital firm, and they invest in companies that will help beef up, you know, their security and, and different types of methods that they can, you know, look at you and spy on you, basically. And what they do is they collect and analyze and distribute geospatial intelligence, so as far as I'm concerned, Pokemon Go would be an ideal vessel ba basically to look at and to take geospatial analysis and evidence everywhere. So in turn, then one of the big things is, well, what is the privacy policy or what are they doing? So Niantic's privacy policy for Pokemon Go says that it may share the aggregated information and non-identifying information with third parties for research and analysis, demographic profiling, and other similar purposes. And the reason why we think this is really big news to share with everybody out there is because the strange thing is, is the company says that it will also disclose information about users, including children under the age of 13, who have been authorized by their parents to use the app. Now, they can turn on your video portion. They have direct access to your Gmail accounts through your phone. So if you accept this app and you accept their privacy policy, they can access every single thing on your phone. They can access your pictures. They can access your email accounts. And if you play the game, they can actually record everything through your video camera. And one of the sections in the privacy notice says that uh, they are authorized to give this information to government or law enforcement officers or private parties 
as we in our sole discretion believe necessary or appropriate to respond to claims, legal process, including subpoenas to protect our property rights and safety and the property rights and safety of a third party or the public in general to identify and stop any activity that we consider illegal, unethical, or legally actionable activity. Which means, what is this, like Pokemon Go now, the new police force on the streets? <laughs> There's all discretion, right? So this is from USA Today. It talks about, you know, it would take 30 days a year to read the terms of service. And then it says... To understand how the app can use data, it helps to know what data the app can collect. It says, for Android users, the game can access both the precise and general locations of the device as well as its camera. Permissions inherently necessary to play the game. Because you basically how it works, by the way, is use the camera and you are essentially using something hooked up to a version of like Google Maps. And you're going around and there's these certain Pokemon, which are creatures in the game that you catch, and they're at certain areas that's geospecific. So you could go downtown or something and there's supposed to be some rare Pokemon there. That's why there's women like finding bodies in rivers and like getting trapped in cemeteries and stuff. And people are like wandering around government locations and bases and stuff because someone um, said there was a, a Pokemon there. Now, what they do is they sell, presumably, presumably, that's how a lot of these uh, apps and companies make their money, is they sell the so-called aggregate uh, data, which would be like, oh, these people traveled here or whatever. And also an interesting uh, thought is it could be tied in with a map system, a mapsing uh, type system where people are walking around. They say it's threatening to surpass Twitter and the amount of players. People are basically just mapping with all of this because it's tracking where you're going. And uh, some security experts are saying data can be used, quote, for good and bad. Uh, an associate professor at Carnegie Mellon University said that basically, you know, it's they're going to monetize the data for advertising like Facebook and Google. See, you know, it's not just the little ads on Facebook on the right side or the sponsored posts that are making it billions upon billions of dollars. It's the fact that they get the user data. That's always what these big apps want is your user data. So they can track you. They can look at your interests. This apparently ties into your, your Google account and can access all of that. The vast amount of information we're giving up on a daily basis is insane, and we're just accepting it. So that's what this is about. It's mm -hmm. not even about, you know, oh, this is some spooky app or whatever. It's about what we've put up with. And that's why it's funny because I want to I talk about this article from Gawker. Oh, such an amazing website, right? Gawker poked fun and did a parody and was like, these conspiracy theorists are afraid to give away all of their information. It says, Pokemon Go, what you need to know about this massive mind control effort. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a joke. And what happened was um, they started saying, you know, people are concerned. It must be the evil CIA government and stuff. No, you're allowed to be concerned about giving your data up to these private corporations that may or may not have any affiliation with government uh, institutions that say, we can do whatever we want with your data. We're going to track you. That's the whole point of the game going around tracking you, uh, getting your geolocation. It's okay to be upset. It doesn't even mean that, you know, you're not allowed to go out and have fun or play the game, whatever, but God, are we, are we now just getting to the point where it's fine. You're well, crazy. It, if you're thing, really mad about the thing it. is though, it takes away from social interaction too. I mean, are we going to have millions of people walking around on the streets like zombies, you know, looking at their phone? Not only are they going to be irradiating themselves with their cell phones, but they're just going to be walking around and they're going to be living in this digital age in this digital fantasy land. So if you look at the the mass effect of it, it really takes away from who we are as the human to human interaction. And you're, you're bringing, not only are you sharing all this information, but you're bringing yourself and your life into a whole nother reality, this digital reality. It's kind of like how in Germany they have to have uh, stoplights on the sidewalk because people are too busy looking at their phones. They get hit by cars and bump into each other. And hey, I'm a, I'm a victim too. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a self victim person. I, I'm on my phone pretty much all the time as well so i'm you know speaking from experience yeah I'm so just beware like out there zombie sometimes too but anyway all right so that's it pokemon go i mean it's a unassuming silly little uh mobile game but at the same time we need to stop standing for this and oh everything's fine give up your data you're a bad person and conspiracy theorist if you have a problem with it uh, i'm anthony gucciardi dr group thanks so much thanks anthony roger stone thank you for joining us i know you're a busy man uh wow so much is going on where should we start first
Well, it's an exciting day, Alex. I am, uh, I'm glad to be back with you. I got to tell you the truth. The only reason I'm able to be with you today is living defense and brain force. That's how exhausted I am. But uh, I've never been more excited about any campaign uh, I've been in, and that includes the Ronald Reagan campaigns, which I, I'm proudest of in my entire career. We are literally on the verge of taking our country back. Uh, and as you said, uh, Trump is now pulling ahead or even in a number of key battleground states, the FBI giving Hillary Clinton a pass. That's not a plus, that's a minus. She may not be going to jail right now, uh, but this has hurt her very badly with the voters because it reinforces the fact that she's inherently dishonest, untrustworthy, uh, and an elite for whom the, the law just doesn't apply. So uh, even as we speak right now, uh, Jeff Sessions, great patriot, U.S. Senator from Alabama, Newt Gingrich, the former speaker, uh, and Mike Pence uh, are, uh, are set to sit down with Donald Trump in Indianapolis. Senator Sessions and, uh, and former Speaker Gingrich are either on their way or have just arrived there. Uh, I still think it may be a day or two before we have the candidate's final decision. Only one man knows who's going to be selected for this ticket. Uh, and of course, that's Donald Trump. Now, many years ago, former President Richard Nixon uh, told me, on the basis of his own mistakes, look, he said, Stone, don't look for somebody who can help you. Just find somebody who doesn't hurt you. Find somebody who is solid, sure-footed, good policy background, not flashy, uh, but somebody who doesn't hurt you. I think that's sound political advice because uh, in recent times, literally in the last hundred years, with the one exception of Lyndon Johnson, I don't think you can point to any vice presidential candidate who has actually mattered. This race is going to be about Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Now, yesterday, the Clinton people purposely floated a rumor that she was looking at a retired admiral uh, for vice president. Uh, we have figured out that this is an attempt to bait us uh, in the Trump camp into the selection of General Mike Flynn. I think Flynn is a great man. I think he'd be a great addition to a Trump administration. Uh, I'm not sure, with the exception of Eisenhower, that generals are particularly cut out for politics because... But he was already uh, near the top of the list. I mean, that's... He was, and it's very clear that uh, Donald has a very high regard for it. And he is the general that came out and exposed that um, when he was the head of defense intelligence that Obama was running ISIS and al-Qaeda. I mean, he's, he's amazing. No, he, he's, a, he's a gutsy, courageous guy. He's a patriotic American. Now, it's interesting that the mainstream media reported that he was a Democrat uh, and that he was, uh, and they construed his comments to say that is that he is pro-choice. But he says that's not true now. Well, in fact, I have, and I will send this to Infowars.com, I have found his voter registration record. Please send it right now, that's huge. Virginia. First of all, Virginia has no voter registration. So one cannot be a oh. Republican or a Democrat. However, he has voted in a prior Republican primary. Uh, CIA Director Flynn... Defense Secretary Flynn, I think he's headed for great things. My own opinion, and this is just my opinion, uh, is that we're probably down to uh, former Speaker Gingrich uh, or, or uh, Mike Pence, a solid conservative from Indiana. Uh, I have my own favorite. I have given the candidate my own private advice. I'm not going to divulge that because you know that is my policy. I, I would have preferred Jeff Sessions. Frankly, I think Sessions has taken himself out of it, but he may also end up in a, a Trump cabinet. I think the reason he's headed to Indianapolis is because Donald Trump values his advice so much. So we're very close. It's very exciting. Trump, ever the showman, tells the New York Times yesterday, there may be a few people on his list that have not been publicly reported. Uh, and as you know, he is the king of public relations and how to get covered. So... We're hunkered down waiting for a decision, but we won't know uh, until the candidate himself makes a decision. And my own personal view is, as this moment, I'm not sure 
a final decision is made. That's why he's meeting with the three. He's probably, probably also seeing if they'll work with him. If, if he picks one of them and the others are then put, put in cabinet positions. He, here's my issue. I don't like to be Machiavellian. I certainly can do it just as good as anybody uh, can. Kind of almost ashamed of myself with that fact I can get in that headspace at a, at a pretty deep level. But obviously at a sick level, I'd like him to pick Genrich because the establishment wouldn't be so scared because of Genrich's globalist connections. I've read his writings. I mean, this guy on the service is this populist conservative, but uh, I mean, he really is the guy that gave us Boehner all of it. He's got some major problems, but I see the fact that that might make the establishment might not, you know, be as, as scared of Trump. Then I worry about Trump getting assassinated if he puts Genrich in. So in a Machiavellian way, I say, okay, I want Trump to win. I hate Hillary so much. Go with the Genrich. But just, I tell you, it'll be the first thing Trump's done that is establishment-esque if he does uh, I would like a Sessions, even if it's politically incorrect, and they try to, you know, attack news from Alabama or stuff 40 years ago, uh, or, you know, somebody like a General Flynn. Now, that's, that's my take. What's your take, Roger Stone? Well, you're almost reading my mind, Alex. You know, when I used to bring up Gingrich with, uh, with uh, former President Nixon, he would just snort and say, <clears throat> Rockefeller guy, which tells me a lot. Newt, did, by the way, did run Nelson Rockefeller's campaign in Georgia in 1968. So, uh, uh, I, I my own personal view is I agree with you. First of all, I love Jeff Sessions. He would be my first choice. Uh, but I'm for whoever Donald Trump is for, and I put my total faith uh, in Trump. I don't think we're going to get a globalist. I don't think we're going to get uh, somebody who doesn't adhere strictly to the Trump agenda. Oh, yeah, they're licking their lips, man. He brings Genrich in, that fox sitting there smiling at him like he's a big fat hen. I mean, Trump's got to be – I know Trump's smart. He just He's crazy if he puts Genrich in. That's my well, view. Nobody uh, recognizes this, but I don't think any candidate for president uh, in our lifetime has wanted to be upstaged. Uh, and I think Newt may have that tendency. He's a very smart guy. He's a very glib guy. In fact, I can't think of any subject on which Newt doesn't consider himself an expert. So, uh, you know, Trump, I, I think, understands the correct role of the vice presidential candidate. There is one caveat, and that is uh, traditional wisdom would say, well, you want an attack dog. You want a guy who will take the partisan attack to the Democrats and specifically to the Clintons. And we know that Newt Gingrich can get under the Clinton skin. I would counter argue that Trump's own pugnacious style makes that unnecessary. He's not afraid to take on the Clintons. He's taken them on ad nauseum and he's going to take them on sure you can also argue he knows all the washington insiders and he suddenly you know the big money will come to him but that's going to come with strings well look this campaign's not never going to be funded by big money it's never going to be funded by wall street what's amazing is that in the month of june the campaign raised 51 million dollars mostly from small donors the 25s the hundreds let the me raise this with you then roger stones our guest on zone.com what do we do to reach out to the Sanders people? I don't see how they stole the delegates. They stole the superdelegates. They robbed him. They chose that Hillary would win the day before with voter news services, the AP. Uh, the, the the primary was a was a simulation for Democrats. How could Sanders supporters not, I mean, a good chunk, 30, 40 percent, how could they not vote so they at least in, in the institution of voting, how could they let a new Politburo, the Democratic Party, the Central Committee do this? I mean, it just seems like that we've got to target them with common sense and go, what is your problem? The big money you claim you hate it is all against Trump, both parties. And now Sanders has rolled over. You've got to go for Trump. Yeah, I think uh, one of the keys, of course, Alex, is, uh, is uh, picking a running mate who was not a cheerleader for the Iraq war. The opening here is that, is that Trump and Sanders are alike on two major issues, war and trade. Uh, and I think that is the key to winning those voters. Now, I can't tell you how disappointed I am to see Sanders himself endorsing Hillary Clinton, because it means that everything he said in his campaign about values and progressive values and principle, it was all BS. Bernie Sanders, with his Doc Brown hairdo, turns out to be just another corporate whore, just another slave for Wall Street. Very, very disappointing. I thought that at least he was a man of principle, perhaps leftist principles, but, you know, not motivated by money and greed and power. And that's it for our show tonight. We do encourage you to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there at prisonplanet.tv. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night.